Let's spend about 10 minutes talking Kansas State football, basketball, and recruiting on KSO Today, a free daily podcast brought to you by K-State Online. Good afternoon. You're listening to KSO Today. I'm Derek Young, as always, filling in on the Tuesdays for the KSO Today edition. It is February 18th, 2020. Uh, just a couple of few notes before we dig too deep into anything is just kind of what's on the site today and kind of if you're not a subscriber letting you know what's available to you if you you know are still considering uh, doing so a big board it's a 25 targets football recruiting targets that Kansas State's kind of centering in on at this point in time that was released yesterday as a, in addition to an updated roster and recruiting center by our very own Matt Hall, who kind of organized position by position Kansas State's football roster um, by class and by position both. Kind of see, kind of shows you what the needs are, how many spots are left, and things of that nature, as well as recruiting targets inside that story as well. There's also a, a couple updates on recruiting on recruits in general. One by me on wide receiver Ty Robinson into the Denver area. That's definitely a new name worth getting to know and making yourself aware of and introducing yourself to. And also by me, a, you know, kind of an update on just what the linebacker situation is in terms of recruiting. Uh, Matt Hall doing kind of a, you know, position by position updates on, on what, the, what the roster looks like uh, before spring football. And, and I'm taking it one step further in terms of evaluating what the needs are recruiting wise stemming from that roster update and then also providing you know how many they need and who they are serious with at each particular position so that's another good story and the last one to kind of really sell is Grant Flanders is an article on the site K-State Online today on Salta Miguel just the big senior season he's having before he heads to Manhattan which uh, is a great story, and, and he's just one of a few, you know, commits signees for K-State that's having a big senior season. So that's something definitely worth uh, reading about. It kind of leads us into our first kind of thing is just to preview is, is the trip that we're going to make to St. Louis as, as a site. Uh, myself, Grant, Hall, Grant Flanders, and Matt Hall, we're going to go watch a couple of basketball games on Wednesday and Thursday night. We'll see Davion Bradford and, and Luke Kasuki, both from the St. Louis area, and that, that'll be a good time. Those are two signees uh, 4K State. Davion Bradford, a four star. Luke Kasuki, a three star. So that should be uh, worth investment in the site if you haven't already invested. And if you have, and you get more bang for your buck as we continue to kind of increase the value of your subscription and you know, entice those that aren't subscribed to subscribe. Uh, basketball team also is getting ready for a couple more games this week. Obviously lost this past week, uh, both games, and, and our last in the conference. And if we're being completely honest, I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. I would expect a 10th place finish in the Big 12. Kind of funny to think that 10th place is last in a conference that says Big 12. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. They play Texas Tech on the road in Lubbock Wednesday night. Uh, I don't anticipate a win there. Lubbock's a pretty tough place to play, and they've made that a pretty raucous environment uh, for Chris Beard and company. Texas is at home Saturday, a little bit of a flip-flop from what, where K-State was as a program last year versus this year, even though last year they won the Big 12 and um, rattled off several Big 12 wins in a row to do that. They actually lost to Texas at home by 20 points in, in a game where I believe is was the kind of the three-point barrage that we saw from Jace Febris of the Longhorns of all people. So um, just a little reminder that that'll be on Saturday, and, and hopefully we don't see another uh, Jace Febris breakout game. Uh, to kind of jump into real content for today's KSO today, another big item on the site today, well, actually on the message board, what what we call the foundation at K-State Online is I have a visitor sheet that I created that shows every visit that every offered prospect in the class of 2021 has made to K-State. Now, uh, 
that includes plenty of prospects at this point. It's a it's a pretty big uh, visit uh, visit list. If we're being honest, as the K State has recruited very well, uh, especially early at the class of 2021, they have five commits. Uh, if you combine, you know, all, all the visits that they've received so far, um, just from 2021 prospects already, and you're getting into the 40, uh, close to the 40 or 50 number at this point. Uh, the most recent was, of course, Devin Neal, the running back from Lawrence High School that visited on February 1st. They expect to have several come to Manhattan in March and April, even offered prospects. I know I have a list of another 13 or 14 that are planning to visit K-State in March um, that have been offered by K-State. And, and to kind of dive into that at least a little bit, I wanted to touch on you know, an example of that, and that's defensive end uh, Braden Wood. He is from uh, a high school in, in Colorado. Uh, K-State just offered him, and, uh, and he's also someone that could slide into a defensive tackle for, for if, when he, at the college level. So that, that, but he is looking to visit K-State in March. Uh, and so is another Colorado prospect that would be Gunnar Helm of Colorado. So those are actually two prospects from the state of Colorado, juniors in the class of 2021 that are looking to visit Manhattan in March, if we're being honest. Uh, K-State is starting to make considerable movement on both prospects right now. And defensive line is a position where they're continuing to try to stockpile really good prospects. Wood is a uh, a guy with a really good offer sheet as well. Um, Arizona State is offered, Louisville is offered, Missouri is offered, Syracuse, Texas Tech. He's going to have his choice of Power Five options. K State will be in one that is pretty significant. He has ties to the K State program. Um, not to give everything away when the, when we know this is you know on the YouTube channel, on our podcast channel, and is not a premium item. So we saved some of the premium information, but to a little bit of a teaser with Braden Wood, he is a defense lineman at a, at a Fairview High School in Longmont, Colorado. Uh, three-star prospect. He has connections to both Jake Rubley and Colin Klein. Jake Rubley, Kansas State's quarterback, commit in the class of 2021, a four-star prospect. They played together in middle school and are still pretty close. So that relationship uh, kind of connects the two when it comes to K-State. And Braden Woods, one of his close uncles, played with Colin Klein at Loveland High School at Colorado as Braden Woods, Braden Woods' dad's brother is pretty close with Colin Klein. So those are just two ties. There's a couple others that we'll, we'll dive into more in depth on the site, but that is a, a serious prospect to note. And there's about 10 others that haven't visited K-State yet, even though they have a K-State offer that'll be in town in March and April as well. And that's on the site. So that's just a really good uh, resource and kind of ups your value of a subscription to K-State Online. Uh, this past week, probably two days ago, I, I had a chat on K-State Online. Another coup for your subscription is you know, we have premium chats and we don't hold back our answers. We answer every question and every subscriber may or may not have. Um, one of the questions asked me what position group would be responsible if K-State were to win more games in 2020 than they did in 2019. Now, if they were to have a worse season in 2020 than they did in 2019, uh, what position would be responsible? Um, so for the ceiling of the team and the floor of the team, what, what kind of, what position impacts that the most? And I picked the same position for both questions. It was the offensive line. I think that's the linchpin of this uh, 2020 season. Uh, Matt Hall got into it early on KSO today, earlier this week. Something that I share, same sentiment, that they have a really good chance to fire out to a hot start in the 2020 season just because of the way the schedule kind of unfolds. I could see Kansas State at least being 5-1. and one. With a with a real shot at six and zero, oh, just because four of the six first six games come against North Dakota, they come against Vanderbilt, Buffalo, Kansas. That should be four 
four wins right there baked in. Now West Virginia is a little bit tricky. Off to the Mountaineers in 2019, and now you have to go to Morgantown. But if you get revenge and what is definitely a winnable game there, that's at least five wins, and that leaves the home game against Texas. So not only do they have that working in their favor, but they have to they have a real question mark on this team, and I can see it going you know, one of two ways. And that's the offensive line because they're replacing five new starters. All five are gone. No more Nick Holtmeyer. No more Scott France. No more Tyler Mitchell. No more Adam Holtorf. No more Evan Curl. This is uh, Josh Revis played a lot, but it'll be an entirely new offensive line. Of course, we believe Josh Revis will be a starter after I think two seasons now, where he's kind of the sixth guy that still, you know, received a considerable amount of meaningful snaps. I think he'll be a starting guard. I don't think he'll kick out the tackle. If anyone kicks out the tackle, still tend to think it'll be Cooper Beebe, and they might need someone to kick out the tackle because I don't know if they have two legitimate offensive tackles ready to roll. Now, there's more. They've kind of, you know, bolstered the roster at the offensive tackle position, but in terms of being ready to go, it's hard to forecast seeing two at this point. I feel comfortable with one, and it might be Christian Duffy. He's someone that they've kind of, they just like the way he approaches his business. Um, and he's kind of been been that other offensive tackle behind France and Kyle Meyer that's been, you know, the closest to being ready. So I don't think that changes between now and September. So I imagine Christian Duffy is there on the offensive line. Cooper Beebe with the chance to kick out the tackle, I think, if someone does right now. Barring any transfers, I think it would be Cooper BB. Uh, I think you sign Dawson Del Forge, who has two years of eligibility left. I don't think you bring him in unless you really think he can start. So I imagine Del Forge and Rebos are two starting guards. Uh, and I feel good about those two at guard. Um, at least comfortable enough to wear. I think that's a likely scenario in terms of the starting lineup. We'll see how it unfolds, you know, how, how they look on the field together, obviously. I'm not talking about performance yet. We haven't even seen a spring football with the, with any of the five new starters. But I think if you, if you are comfortable at any spots on the offensive line in terms of naming possible starters, I think the two most likely starters would be Josh Rivas and Dawson Del Forge's guards. I could totally change, and I might be singing a different tune, you know, a month or two from now, but that's, I, I feel most comfortable in that. And then maybe Christian Christian Duffy, as long as he's ahead of the people he's been, players he's been ahead of, he stays ahead, that it's hard not to see him starting in one of the offensive tackle positions. The other offensive tackle is the question mark, and I, I throw in Cooper Beebe as a possibility, but the, really that's more of a mystery than anything else. And center's probably going to be quite the battle as well. I imagine there's probably more contenders for that role than what I'm about to say, but the two that come to mind for me when it comes to snapping the ball to the quarterback this year would be Noah Johnson, who went on scholarship before uh, the season last year, and Ben Adler, who's been a young guy that the last coaching staff had high hopes for and the new one does now as well. So those are kind of the names that you know, make the most sense at this point in time. We're going to find a lot out. We're going to find out a lot about them in spring football. But as of right now, I see that position group, um, at least if you want to talk about position groups that have the most impact on this football season, I don't think there's any question that the offensive line will have the biggest impact. Whether it be positive or negative, we'll find out. But when you have five new starters, it's hard to think that you'll take a step forward unless that group really exceeds expectations. And if you're going to fall below the, you know, eight and four mark that you set in 2019, it's hard to believe that a position that breaks in five new starters isn't one of the culprits or at least the main culprit. So thought that was an interesting question off the top of my head. Not sure who asked it on the on our message board, but I really appreciated the question. It was a great question. But I do think the offensive line is the answer for that question. I think the offensive line would be the reason that they do better than eight and four, and I think it would be the reason that they do worse than eight and four, as that 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 position is the one with the the least amount 
that we know about and can really shift the season one way or the other, and it probably will. You know, my my prediction for this season right now is hovering in that seven and five mark, thereabouts. You you know, one game more than that or one game below it. You know, in that area, and that's actually you know better than than what I forecasted last year. Last year, I think most you know. K-State reporters probably forecasted in the neighborhood of four or five wins and then they won eight. So it doesn't really mean anything, but I still think because of the schedule and just having another year in the system that they can win more, just as many games this year as they did last year. But it's going to take uh, a good coaching job by Connor Riley, especially on the offensive line. He's got his work cut out for him. You don't really ever see five new brands five brand new starters on, on, on the offensive line in the same year. Uh, but that's what he's going to have to manage. And and certainly when it happens, I don't think it's typically an overnight success. So it's going to be a work in progress, and there's probably going to be some hair-pulling moments for him and the, and the coaches in general. But thanks for listening to KSO Today. I've been Derek Young. It's February 18, 2020. The next time you hear us, we'll probably be on our way to St. Louis. So enjoy enjoy the product on the site and we enjoy uh enjoy your attention and enjoy your investment in our product thanks